there are some times as a dealer that you just cannot believe your good fortune and that this is happening to you, but this is one of them. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey, it's George the Antique Nomad. Let's go inside and see what else they've got. Well, one of the things that I like about this store is they keep it active. First thing is they control this front display. And so they've got an area where they can set up for each season. Whoop, hang on, let me help this guy. Sorry, let me get that out of the way for you. You doing all right? Okay, good. Sure. Well, the folks here are very friendly, very nice, and they've seen the channel, so it's great. I can film, and I like filming here. The one thing I think they do that's so smart that a lot of stores don't is they keep control of the very first display that you see when you come in, so they can do seasonal things. So they've got a fall season here, everything from the marching band sweater from the 50s. This belonged to Don and is $24. That's actually not bad for a, an old Leatherman's jacket. They've got the Bobcat, a lot of fall decor. It's nice when the store actually can make itself seem fresh all the time, and I think it's a really good idea to control your front displays personally. Here's something really neat. We are in Alabama, and while a lot of this part of Alabama was settled later, Alabama is a very old state. People started moving here shortly after the American Revolution, and actually the French and Spanish were here before that. So you're going to see really neat old things like this door here. This door set is on layaway, so I can't tell you how much they paid, but it is old and tall and looks like something you would have seen in the French Quarter of Louisiana. I would say that this could date back to the late 18th century. Bird bath for $50, that is not a bad price. People like concrete statuary and garden stuff these days. Here's a pedal car that is priced at $375. This looks like something that would have been commercially made, but I've never seen this one before. It's seen better days, but it's a pretty neat design with the VC marked on top. They also have showcases when you first come in, and showcases are great because you're going to see some better items shut away in them. But first I want to show this pickled burled walnut chest from about 1840. Again, you're going to see old furniture in this part of the country. Now, it looks like the hardware has been replaced on this, but it's a neat design. And let's open the drawers to see. Looks like they've rebuilt the drawers. See how the wood is very white in color compared to the rest? So this drawer must have had some sides missing and had to be redone. So this has had some restoration. This side, on the other hand, that one looks restored and the other one doesn't see the difference in the color. This one's got oxidation and has turned browner. And this one is still pretty white. So those are clues when you're looking at restorations. Now, here's a neat Nelson McCoy butterfly vase. I always thought this was one of their more handsome patterns. It's still rustic. It's still in that era where the glazes were not done in a very thoughtful manner. But to me, it really works in this pattern. And you've got a nice Japanese head vase next to it for $35. And that seems like a fair price, especially because she's got her original plastic flower bonnet. So the little plastic floral display. Those were mainly sent from florists with live flowers in them. So we don't see a lot of the plastic flowers, actually. And then down here is a little guy, a caiman, I believe. An alligator-like guy. He might have to go to Florida with me. I'll take a look at him. Here's a neat category. A lot of these are more recent custom, but game calls in general are collectible. And some of these custom-made ones, which are only probably 20 to 30 years old, are actually selling for $100 or more. But this one in front is interesting because this is carved out of deer antler. 
with wood flowers on it. And this was a turkey call, this white item on the front here. That one's quite old. They have it priced at $75. Very interesting piece. We see a lot of these gold figures from California signed Anthony or Freeman McFarlane, and that's a 1960s and early 70s era modernist design, and they always did the gold finishes. Very Hollywood Regency, and popular with collectors. I think this pair's priced at 55, and that does seem to be about the going rate for these. Here's a very pretty piece. It looks like it's just the cover for a really beautiful Italian bowl, and the bottom is gone now, unfortunately. Because these do not go together, but that is a beautiful piece of glass. Wish we could see the original bottom. This space has a fun quilt that I'll show you, and also this cute little figure, which is a piano baby under a glass dome. Someone's done a neat display with that. But right here, this I like because it's got dates on it, and it's a pattern that looks like a broken F with a diamond in the corner. I don't know the name of this pattern. I don't know if it was someone's initial that they were having fun with, or if this is actually a pattern name. I haven't seen this pattern before. It is a friendship quilt because it's got the names embroidered. Each person would do a square and then you came together in a quilting bee and sewed it together for the recipient. And this was done in 1935. Also popular in the 1930s were silhouettes. And most of these are reverse painted that we see, meaning that the black parts are painted on the back of the glass. So if you drop it and crack it, well, you've broken the silhouette. And then the prints of the pictures or whatever scenes were behind Sometimes they have foil backs, sometimes they're just plain, sometimes they are just printed on paper and are not reverse painted. You can see in this one where the reverse painting is starting to come loose from the glass, that's why there's a variation in color. I never buy them if they're like that because you don't know what will happen to them. This one's just printed plain on paper, so it's less expensive and not as desirable. But this one's really cute and I'm going to buy her because I think I can get 24. I used to see these cute little breakfast sets where they'd have the salt, pepper, and a little sauce jar. I guess they'd be used at any meal, but I used to see these a lot more often than I do now. They show these as 1920s. I think they're honestly a little bit older than that, probably from right around 1900. The glass is milk glass, and so it's going to show fire if you get it in the light correctly, but we really can't see because we've got a cap on that one. But it's hand-painted, and these little sets, this one's priced at 69 They seem to go anywhere from about 35 to 75 depending on ornateness and the type of glass. These are string holders, and these are utility ones made of cast metal, usually cast iron, or some pot metal. And then the ceramic one to the right here, which is from Japan. And these are all priced in the 35 to $75 range. The better the design, the more desirable they are. But they use these in general stores as well as homes, so you do see them around, and now you know, if you haven't seen one before, what you're looking at when you find one of these. And then these are Seminole dolls. The mother and child is cute because they're a pair, and they're priced at 25 for the pair, which is pretty inexpensive, but it says the dress is as is, and I do see some stitching coming out. They look like they're 1930s. If I was handy with a needle, I'd buy that because those sell for about 25 a piece down in Florida, but I just don't think I have the ability to restore it correctly. Here's a really sweet piece that I'd love to take home if the price is right. It may not be because people know what these are. This is a cloche. Cloche is a French word for bell, C-L-O-C-H-E. And these calves were very popular for the flappers to wear because they had that jaunty style and were very streamlined. This one's been well sewn. It does have one hole in it, but it's in the neutral part at least, and it's got its nice bow. So let's see what the price is on this. Oh my goodness. It is $5. That is so cheap that I'm going to take that one. I think that's a good deal for what it is. Even though it's not in perfect condition, it's very cute. It's going to date back to the 1930s. And look at this label on the inside of this hat. California Evergreen Sport Hat, and they show the car driving through the redwoods. I think the label is actually as good as the hat. I'm definitely getting this. This is cool.
there are some times as a dealer that you just cannot believe your good fortune and that this is happening to you, but this is one of them. This set of cafe ware is from the finest and most historically prized hotel in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Vinoy Hotel was built during the landfill, and boom, it's this big pink edifice. And here is a whole set of hotel china from there, from the 1930s. I recognize it because they have a big display of all their china patterns over the years in the hallway. It's a wonderful place. It's definitely worth seeing if you go to that part of Florida. But $75 for this whole set. I cannot believe my good fortune. If I don't keep it, it's going to make some collector really happy. So, good score. Okay, well, we seem to have gotten into a dark case here, but this dark case is full of noisemakers, and I think they're really cute and a fun thing to show. These are from the 1950s primarily. You do see Black Americana. That's priced on the high side around 18. Latin dancers and clowns are going to be less. There's the funny people at the New Year's party. These were just really cute little cheap novelties that people used once or twice at a party and then forgot about in drawers, and now they're very collectible. Between eight and $15 a piece primarily. I wanted you to get a chance to see this. This is a celluloid makeup travel kit in the original box, and the boxes are really cool. This one's missing a couple of pieces, but it's got the mirror, it's got a lot of the other stuff. It's only $35. When they're really complete and fancy, they can be $75 to $95. Not a bad deal in the middle there. That Rainbow Cat, the green one, it's got the original tag. It's from the 1960s. It's only priced at $15, and the cats have really become pretty collectible. Everybody loves cats. Then back of them you have Joseph Original Sprites, and these are something that you really don't see much at all. They say, someone nice, secret pal, one is thank you, one says birthday. The individual ones are priced about $40 each, and the soap dish at $75, but I've got to say they're, they're really not commonly found. So while I'm thinking of it, Please comment in the space below here and also hit the thumbs up button to like this video. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button below. Also hit the bell below to be notified of new videos coming every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And thank you so much for following along. Let's go back to this video. I've mentioned lately that safety razors seem to be becoming more and more popular and more collectible and are selling for prices that in many cases eclipse the old straight razors now. You can see a lot of technological changes. These come out as early as about 1913, but there's all sorts of innovations in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. And as they add different elements, they sometimes have a few models that were only around very briefly. So you'll see two that look alike, and one's $15 and one's $30, and it all has to do with some subtle difference between the two of them. Definitely an area worth looking into if you find these sorts of things at sales. And then here's a bunch of the Joseph birthday girls. They have some of the taller ones that are more valuable and harder to find, but they have a lot of the birthstone birthday girls with the black eyes, which are the original issues priced around $15 each, and that seems to be about the going rate on these these days. A cute, not expensive thing to collect that was really well made. Hull made the lava bows in the 1950s, and this is an example of that. It's a two-piece set. If you've only got one piece, then it's incomplete. This one's not functional. Other companies did make functional ones, but they were really just wall decorations. This is a triptych mirror from the 1920s, and you get the idea. There's three parts, two prints or some other design around a central panel. Sometimes it's three mirrors together, usually with etching, if that's the way it's combined. If you're going to do a booth that mixes some repurposed and older with newer, this is a nice way to do it, because the emphasis is still on the older. They've taken older farm tables, and they've restored them. And in this case, they've done some fabric and a design on something that was pretty plain to begin with. This one, they've painted out the corner shelf with a nice contrast. This cabinet, they've redone the glass. 
so it's turned into pantry and the etched glass is nice and yet the linens are old you know it's nice to see if you're going to be decorating and mixing the two that there's some respect for the originality of the pieces and i feel like they've managed that here so good job these are old bowling alley chairs, so they all are marked Brunswick. A lot of bowling alleys have left us. We probably have about a quarter of the ones that we had in 1965. But some really neat furniture was in those, very modernist at the time. So for only $45 a piece and $35 in the case of these to the right, you can get a nice set of very functional stacking chairs that have a retro appeal and some really good colors. The other cool thing about this furniture is if you've got kids, you can have old stuff in the house that's comfortable, that they can bang on and they're not gonna hurt anything. Then in the back here, they do have a big area that is newer resale along with some antiques and used and vintage. A lot of antique stores in a city this size have to do both because it's really the only place to get this sort of used stuff and you'll see a mix of older and newer in here including something that i dread seeing these days which is an electric organ very hard to sell unless it's a really good model that you're able to sell cheaply because people are just buying keyboards now and then these very 70s chairs look at that color boy they just can be seen from outer space can't they and they are in really wonderful condition priced at $75 each. Well, the Arlington Hotel. This is a place that apparently chewing and spitting was fine because this is a cuspidor with the hotel logo right on it. And it's actually pretty nice quality porcelain. This is Syracuse, China, who did a lot of this sort of wear for restaurants and cafes and institutions. So that's kind of neat. $24, it seems well-priced. It's just such a specific thing. I'm not sure who the customer is, but I'll bet there's someone out there. Well, we're in Alabama, so we're gonna see George Wallace stuff. He ran for president several times, the last being the top there, 1977. He had changed a lot of his views on segregation by the time he ran the last time. He was definitely a very controversial guy, and he actually took a lot of votes away from Hubert Humphrey from the labor movement in 1968, and that was part of the reason that Nixon became president. We've got the Blanco Amberina pitcher, or Ewer, for 65. That's a pretty good price, a fair collector price anyway. This is Fenton Lime Custard from about 1970, and this stuff will glow under a black light. It's not always marked. And then Noah's Ark. This is treasure craft from the late 1970s and early 80s. And it's got all the animals. It's very cute. This one's priced at 35, and they seem to go for about that because it is one of the more desired designs in cookie jars that they did. I've just got to show this wall because I haven't seen a collection of glass baskets this large in a really long time. They have a lot of milk glass and clear. They have a lot of the old 1930s and 40s patterns and even things back to the teens and 20s scattered in amongst things from the 1960s and 70s. This block pattern here is a high Z colonial pattern. This one, which is more likely to be European, is a buttons and bow top. You see hobnail here. And I notice with these feather designs in the handles that those are usually 1930s vintage. And you'll see a lot of different variations on that theme. I think they actually started those designs as early as about 1910. The prices on these are anywhere from about eight to $20, which is about where they go. But it's just fun because a lot of people really don't collect baskets like they once did to see all of these different patterns in one place is kind of inspiring. This three-peat set with the chippy paint is $140. Now you can tell by some of the attachments here 
and the weight of it that these have some age. They're not cast iron. They're probably pressed aluminum. Less likely to rot outside. Not as old and heavy as the cast iron would be. But a good look and definitely vintage. And people are really interested in this sort of decor, especially because I'm headed to Florida and it'll be the season where people go outside. We know I like to try on hats, but this is just too much. And besides, these are mainly women's. I don't like good in men's hats, let alone women's, but uh, I do think it's fun to see such a big display. A lot of these are felt. Most of them are vintage. The purple and red, well, those are for the red hat lady, so those are usually more recent. Look at this great green color with the big bow on it. This one sits up very high. And if we get under the paper here, we're going to see Belmar. That's a company we see in the 1950s and 60s. I admit, I love kitsch. What more could you want than foot-long squirrels studded with rhinestones on your table to use for your salt and pepper? These were a souvenir of someone's trip to Colorado in the 50s. They're priced at $16.50. These long salt and peppers always sell for better prices, and they usually sell pretty fast. That's really cool. And then next to it, you're going to see these quite a lot. This is $35, which is a fair price, but these gold Coke thermometers actually are a lot more prevalent than you might imagine, particularly in the South. That's why they don't sell for more than that. And here is a good case with a lot of number ones. And that's what you're looking for. Number one Spider Woman, $60. Number one, Wolverine in the first Solo series, $38. The lower the price, there's a lot of 12 cent in there for Thor. And you see how the prices start at 45. And then by the time you get into the later era, they're down to $18. That tells you something about the market. You really want as old as possible in as good condition as possible. And by old, I mean old relative to the series. So if X-Men came out when it was 12 cents, well, that one's worth $100. Now here's number 138 instead of number 15, which was the $100 one. Well, 138 is worth $45. Here's Mr. Zip. The zip code was introduced at the end of 1963 and they needed some sort of a way to get people to adjust to the fact that they suddenly had to put this five digit information on. So they advertise it in a number of different ways, including this thermos. This is an Aladdin thermos. This is one of the first that was fully plastic. It's priced at $28 and they have cute little town names like Beetle, Kentucky in Santa Claus, Indiana and Mr. Zip. Iceberg, Pennsylvania. That's where the lettuce comes from. And then behind it here, we've got this really cute little cowboy top with the embroidery. This would have been some kids back in the 60s during the height of Western fandom. Might even be back to the 50s now that I look at it because look at the buttons on the sleeves rather than snaps. Between people working at home and the interest in industrial design. This lamp is a great deal for $15. It used fluorescent tubes. You can get more of those if needed, but it's metal. It's from about 1970. It's definitely got the look. I usually get about 40 to 45 for these. So if I have room in the car, which could be tough, I'm going to get this. A lot of folks have seen this in the brown and green rustic colors, but this is McCoy rustic in the pink and green. I just wanted to show this because it is an alternative that you'll see sometimes. It's got the McCoy mark. You can see they didn't even fully glaze the bottom, so you know it's real. <laughs> it's got lots of pinhole glaze blisters as well. McCoy really was not about high quality, they were about high production. It wasn't until later in their production runs that the quality got better, but that's part of what people like about it is it 
looks more unfinished and hand formed. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!